I'm back with another John Wayne review. Today is actually John Wayne's birthday, marking 116 years since the Duke was born. Brannigan was released in 1975 and was the second of two police thrillers that John Wayne made back to back. It was directed by Douglas Hickox and also stars Richard Attenborough, Judy Geeson, Mel Farrar, and John Vernon. John Wayne stars as Jim Brannigan, a Chicago cop that is sent to London to bring back an escaped American fugitive. Let's just say his style of police work doesn't mesh very well with jolly old England. Last week I reviewed McHugh, which was the first film starring John Wayne as a cop. That one was only a second watch for me, but Brannigan... Brannigan is a movie that I have seen quite a number of times. I've always considered it to be a pretty good movie and was easily better than McHugh, but it had been some time since my last watch of it, and watching the two so close together is an interesting experience. Where McHugh was a somewhat darker film for John Wayne in comparison to most of his output, both tonally and in terms of the noir cinematography, Brannigan is much more of a traditional John Wayne film, at least in the tone. It's lighter on the action than his westerns, to be sure, but it contains the level of humor that you would normally expect. It's a slower paced movie than McHugh, and as I alluded to, McHugh is more of an action-heavy mystery for the most part. What's interesting is looking at their directors. McHugh was directed by John Sturgis, a very experienced filmmaker, responsible for many action and western classics, who was nearing the end of his career. He only made one more movie after McHugh, that being the war film The Eagle Has Landed, so you can feel his more old-fashioned approach to filming movies in the cinematography, and some of the fight choreography and staging of the action, while giving it this darker, more modern feel. And then you look at Douglas Hickox with Brannigan, a much younger director, British as well, with only a handful of movies under his belt prior to Brannigan, and he presents this movie with more modern-feeling cinematography, which I'll talk about more later, but he uses some of these more current filmmaking techniques to make a movie that's brighter and a more traditional fish-out-of-water story. I'd be curious to find out how he was selected as the director. He was born in London, which would make you think he would be potentially looking at finding atypical areas of the city to shoot in, but he filmed the movie in pretty standard London locations. That might have more to do with this being the first John Wayne movie to be shot on location in London, so you want to make sure to hit the usual list of places, I'm not sure, but it's interesting to think about. What both movies have in common is, of course, John Wayne, who displays his effortless charisma yet again. His character of Brannigan is given a fantastic introduction, as John Wayne usually was. If you look at the opening of Chisholm or Cahill U.S. Marshall, this one slots right in there and is one of the most memorable parts of the movie. He kicks down a door right off its hinges and intones, knock, knock. It can't get much better than that. And that line gets a nice callback during the final scene, and it works just as well with John Wayne sauntering in. The movie also plays up both his size and his age. He was pushing 70 at the time, and that gets one mention, even if he's still flirting like crazy with Judy Geeson, who we'll get to, and there are comments made about his being slightly smaller than the Statue of Liberty, and Right at the beginning, I think before we even meet him, one cop says, Get Brannigan. Use a forklift if you have to, but get him! These lines are just playing up the mythic proportions of John Wayne, the man, more so than Jim Brannigan as a character. He plays the role almost exactly like he would if he was playing a sheriff in a western. He strides through the movie with that iconic gait, and even gives his Colt diamond back a little twirl at one point, like he's back in Monument Valley for the searchers. He plays up the humor perfectly, like he always does, and it's a great and somewhat laid-back performance all around. Richard Attenborough plays a Scotland Yard detective that is forced to work with and try to keep in line Lieutenant Brannigan. He's a lot of fun as this stiff upper lip, somewhat irritable British detective who is capable of getting his hands dirty and loosens up the more he spends time around his American colleague. He and John Wayne play well together, whether they're shouting at each other about Brannigan's unauthorized use of his colt in the streets of London, or playing good cop, bad cop with an uncooperative criminal, and Richard Attenborough is the bad cop in this scenario. John Wayne seems to enjoy allowing someone else to be the tough guy as he frightens the poor crook with whispered tales of Attenborough's temper. Judy Geeson plays another detective, this one assigned to drive Brannigan around and babysit him for the most part. She and John Wayne have terrific chemistry, even if he's flirting with her a bit too much. She was in her late 20s at the time, and the Duke was around 68, so a convincing love interest, she's not. Thankfully, she has a fiancé, and there are no actual romantic interludes between the two, but they play their scenes excellently. My only issue is she's not utilized nearly enough. John Vernon is the villain of the film, the criminal on the run from Brannigan who winds up getting kidnapped before the simple extradition can take place. 
It's a very brief role, really only showing up at the very beginning and very end of the film, with only a couple appearances in between, but he does the job. He's blustery and arrogant, and seems like someone that John Wayne would like to get his hands on, or around his lapels, I think John Wayne says in the movie. Mel Farrar plays John Vernon's lawyer, tasked with organizing the ransom drops, etc. He's appropriately sleazy and snooty, and makes a nice counterbalance to John Wayne in their scenes together. Brannigan is constantly antagonizing him, and vice versa. And finally, Daniel Pylon plays the mysterious hitman sent to London to snuff out our favorite detective, hired by John Vernon, of course. His character of Gorman is cold and menacing, but is mostly just a threat personified. He's less of a character and more a collection of standout elements. He wears sunglasses almost constantly, carries a large Mauser pistol as his weapon of choice, and drives a striking red and black Jaguar. So striking that Brannigan can recognize it by its sound alone. Not a great, inconspicuous vehicle for a professional assassin, but it looks great on screen. As I mentioned, nearly every landmark you expect to see in a movie set in London makes an appearance. The location photography is fantastic, and I'm not sure if there are any scenes shot on sound stages. The movie utilizes the city very well. Buckingham Palace shows up a couple of times, Big Ben, Trafalgar Square, a major sequence is set in Piccadilly Circus, and another one ends on Tower Bridge. Speaking of which, let's talk about the action. Where McHugh had car chases every few scenes, Brannigan has only one, but it's fantastic. John Wayne commandeers a car to go after a killer, dragging the car's owner along for the ride. Keeping him in the car might be unrealistic, but it adds so much humor to the scene as he winces over every bump and acceleration. The chase is shot so well, with lengthy shots taken from the perspective of the front of Brannigan's car. They give a tremendous sense of speed, Focusing on that over cutting to John Wayne that often does highlight that he's likely not doing much of the driving, but they look great. And the chase ends with them ramping Tower Bridge as it's being raised, and then crashing the car. It's a great combination of comedy and suspense, and ends with John Wayne standing beside this wrecked car, framed with Tower Bridge above him. There are some fun booby traps used during the hitman Gorman's first attempts on Brannigan's life. These include a door-triggered shotgun and a bomb-rigged toilet. The shotgun in particular is shot really well with extreme close-ups. Douglas Hickox uses this type of close-up a few times, another being Gorman's attempted drive-by shooting during a downpour, his massive silencer angled out the window, the car creeping forward. It all looks great. Also during that scene, there is some nice use of slow motion as Brannigan goes into action, smashing a window and blasting away with his colt into the rain. That whole sequence does raise a question. How exactly did Gorman mistake Judy Geeson in a hat and trench coat for John Wayne. There is a good foot and a half to two feet, potentially, between their heights. They try to explain it away by having Gorman wiping his windshield and trying to peer through the rain. It must have been raining really hard. But getting back to the slow motion, that's one example of a more modern-feeling style being used in a John Wayne movie. There's another shot during the finale of Gorman's Jaguar turning around, kicking up mud in this extended slow-motion shot. I love that. And we get a saloon brawl in an English pub. It's a fun scene, it starts for hardly any reason at all, like these brawls always do, and it thankfully avoids going full slapstick. It's well shot, and actually has a plot function of sorts, bringing Brannigan and one of the kidnappers together. I also really enjoy the whole ransom drop scene. It's long, and goes through multiple stages, as they track the envelopes from a mailbox, to a post office, to a bike messenger. So often these types of scenes are abbreviated, or just turn into a crazy chase, or something like that. But this one is just a very procedural, very effective scene. It's not suspenseful, per se, but just really engrossing to watch. And the finale, which is almost a bullfight with Brannigan facing off with Gorman in his car, we get another wonderful close-up as Brannigan gets ready for his shot. It's a fun little set piece, complete with an explosion. The score was by Dominic Frontier. He composed the score to Chisholm, one of my favorite movies. If you're interested in hearing me go on about why it's a favorite for half an hour, I reviewed it last year. But his score here has a really good driving main theme and some good secondary themes, but a lot of it does sound very much like a 70s TV show. Some of that is fine, it feels like a private detective theme, but some of it feels more heart-to-heart-like, which doesn't quite fit the movie as well. But that main theme, again, you watch the opening credits as it plays out over shots of Brannigan's revolver, it sets the tone very well. So between McHugh and Brannigan, which is my favorite of John Wayne's short list of 70s cop movies. Between the two, McHugh has the more compelling story. Seeing John Wayne sort through a twisty murder mystery complete with cover-ups and double-crosses 
is very interesting and a lot of fun. But there are a couple of moments that don't sit well with me. Brannigan, on the other hand, while it's a slower, breezier movie, it's still what I would turn to when I'm wanting a comforting John Wayne movie. Neither one rises above something like Big Jake, The Shootist, or, again, Chisholm in terms of latter-day John Wayne movies, but they're good watches. Brannigan comes recommended. Thanks very much for watching my review. If you enjoyed this, I hope you'll consider coming back for more. I'll have more reviews coming shortly. Thanks again, and adios for now.